got a bit of a curve to it. So it's ideal, it's like a spoon, right? It's ideal when you're trying to net a fish. Most uh, fishing nets are kind of flat, right? Like they're, they're flat, like a tennis racket. This one's, I don't know if you can tell that, but it's got a curve. So it's just easier to scoop them up. <laughs> Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and I thought I'd share with you a really cheap and easy way to get a, a dollar store, you know, bug net, head net, and turn it into a fishing net. Uh, the other day, uh, yesterday, I went fishing with my daughter, and I couldn't find my, my usual net. I couldn't find it anywhere. And uh, where we were going, it's handy to have a net. I also like having a net because if I see minnows, uh, there's a way you can catch minnows just using a fishing net, especially if you got one like this with a nice deep reservoir. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, anyway, I didn't have a lot of time, so I just, for whatever reason, the idea for putting this together uh, came to me, and in about 20 minutes I had a fishing net. So here's what you got. You've got, a, and you could use wood for this too, if you could find, usually wood that's along the bank of river, river will take a bend quite easily, uh, but I had this in my garage. This is a type of uh, plumbing pipe called PEX pipe. Any, any modern house, Older houses used to use uh, copper piping for copper pipes for the plumbing, but the new ones use this plastic stuff called PEX. Um, it's relatively cheap by the foot. And if you know any, if you have any friends that have recently done renovations, they probably have a coil of this sitting around that they don't need. Uh, right? So this is about, I think, a wingspan's worth, six feet of it. I right? just bent it around and I attached it here with some electrical tape. Attach it down here with some electrical tape and put, put it, just a piece of wood here to give it like, you know, a dimensionality that feels right in the hand, right? Just, just a stick. And just wrapped it up with electrical tape. <laughs> if it starts coming loose, so just add more, right? Electrical tape's the cheapest, most amazing thing ever. And then all I did was um, I stretched the, uh, the mosquito net over, over the hoop and attached it down here with electrical tape. Okay, really good, so it won't come loose. And then using monofilament line, just the same stuff you use for fishing, I tied a double over hand knot here to, to hold the, you know, like the, the part of the net, uh, it, it's got a bit of a rope, right? So I just used some monofilament line to tie it here, and to tie it here, and the same thing on the other side, here and here, just to hold it open and hold the shape. It's got a bit of a, a spot here, but you kind of want that if you, you know, lift up, it, if you're using it as a minnow trap, when you're bringing it up, you can tilt it up very quickly and they'll get trapped in there. So having a little bit of a space here is, is kind of advantageous. And I mean, sure, this isn't going to work. You wouldn't want to be netting salmon or striped bass or something like this, but I'm talking about panfish, you know, trout. Most of the trout I tend to catch anyway are like, you know, eight, nine, you know, inches, uh, 12 or 13 inches is a monster the places I go for trout. Um, but this is just a great, simple, Net. I used to have, I, mean, I can't find it anymore, but one of these nice sort of wooden ones, it's not quite as wide and it's not quite as long. This is a better size. You know, I would say this is 16 inches from top to bottom. And this teardrop shape is just ideal. Also, if you can see, I don't know if you can see from the distance, it's got a bit of a curve to it. So it's ideal, it's like a spoon, right? <laughs> it's ideal when you're trying to net a fish. Most uh, fishing nets are kind of flat, right? Like they're, they're flat, like a tennis racket. This one's, I don't know if you can tell that, but it's got a curve. So it's just easier to scoop them up. <laughs> it's, it's like a spoon, right? It's, it's, it's ready made for that. But it's not, and it just naturally takes on that curve when you bend it around using this PEX pipe. And I imagine a lot of materials that bend will probably do that. Uh, for carrying, dead easy. You just, you know, stick it, stick it through your belt like that, right? Just stick it through your belt. When you need it, you got it, right? Just stick it through your belt. All right, if you're gonna be going through some rough stuff, just, you know, pick up your shirt. If you're, go if you're going through some rough stuff, just put your shirt over the whole net, and that way it won't, won't get uh, fetched up and stuff. I seem to like it a bit offside like that. Seems to be comfortable to walk with it like that. You don't even really notice it's there, All right? But yeah, if you're going through, if you have to crawl through a bunch of brush, and I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about bush fishing here, you know, you're not, you know, on a $30,000 bass boat, uh, like the guys you see on TV wearing, you know, race car outfits, 
<laughs> I always find that kind of ridiculous. I'm talking about putting on a pair of boots or waders, walking out into the woods and doing some fishing like that. Uh, there's, you know, brush, thorns, rough country are all part of that game. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you don't, you want a net that's small enough you can, you can, you can, you can shove it up your shirt, right? Even for that matter, you could shove it up your shirt and just stick it in your back pocket like that, right? That way, when you're going through the rough stuff, it won't get, you know, because netting seems to grab every thorn, every needle you can imagine. Now, for using this as a, a minnow trap, that's easy too. I mean, all you need to do, this is not the right size, but you'd get, see how you got two, two holes in the back, right? You get two sticks just from the shore. If you're fishing on a river, there's gonna be sticks everywhere, right? You put a stick in each of those holes, that's maybe six feet long. So I'm trying to find something that looks like that around here. Just here in the backyard, I don't see anything. Anyway, you get two sticks that are maybe six feet long, right? And you put, put, a, put a stone in the bottom or, or just anything with some weight and put some broken up pieces of bread and just lower it into the water. And the reason you have the sticks is so you can get it out into the water a little bit, but still have it attached to shore and you can control the depth. You'd want this to be maybe four or five inches below the surface of the water so the fish can swim into it, right? And you just leave it like that. So you, your, if you do any kind of fishing, if you've got any sort of experience trout fishing, uh, minnows are just the best bait you can find. They're just, I mean, depending on the, there's, o there's only a handful of circumstances where they won't take a minnow. They love a minnow. And even if you're fly fishing, one of the best flies is a muddler minnow, right? A minnow imitation. They love, if you're fly fishing and they're not taking anything, uh, the muddler minnow is one of the best imitations because fish love minnows, especially if you're working, if the minnow looks injured, if the minnow looks like it's easy pickings, big meal, very little work, they're gonna go for it. They can't resist a minnow. Uh, so if you're fishing, you know, whatever you, maybe you've brought some bait or you brought some spinners or you brought artificial lures or you've brought, if you're fly fishing or whatever. And as you're wading around the water or walking along the shore, you notice minnows. It's worth your while to take five or 10 minutes to try to catch a minnow. <laughs> so you just rig this thing up. So it's out into the water. You know, you got a couple of sticks here holding, holding it to the shore. I'll make a video of this at some point in time, but it's just, it, you know, it's the morning right now. I'm just in my backyard basically, but I was using this yesterday and I thought I'd make a video. You have this below the surface of the water so the fish can swim in, but all the food's down here, right? And uh, some minnows will get in there and you whoo, lift it up. <laughs> then you've got the best bait. <laughs> you got the best bait, right? So that's the other reason I rigged this up so I wouldn't have to bring a minnow trap as well. It's dual purpose. It's, it's I, you know, there are minnow traps that are designed almost like this, right? The main thing is you got to have a way to keep the bread from floating up. Well, that's, not, that's not impossible. You could have some sort of small mesh bag that, um, that closes up, right? So you can keep the, keep the, you, you have a small mesh bag an old onion bag would work fine. Anything like that, right? Something you'd throw away, right? And you just put the bread in that, gather it up, tile it, put, a, put the stone right in that bag so it stays, throw it in the bottom, lower that in, and just have that there while you're fishing. And if there's any minnows around, I mean, I've set minnow traps up and caught minnows in 15 minutes, right? So it's, it's worth giving it a go, and it's not hard to dry this thing off, you know, you just, you know, you take it out, clean it off a little bit, wipe, wave it around a few times in the air, it should dry off. Then you can stick it back in your, you know, in your belt or your back pocket or whatever. But, uh, yeah, anyway, just to recap, you know, bend the plastic around, bends easily, attach it here with some electrical tape, attach it at the bottom with electrical tape, put a third piece on just to sort of keep it from twisting too much. It seems to, this stuff wants to twist a bit, so you put a third, whatever you can put on here. You could even put a flat piece of wood for that matter, like an old stick from a paint stirring stick would be perfect, right? And then electrical tape that, or if you want to do something fancy or fine, right? Leave these open, don't plug them. They're handy to have open like that. Then you just put the mosquito net over it, electrical tape it at the bottom, tie it here, tie it here, tie it here, tie it here, just using double overhand knot with monofilament. Of course, you could, you could have more points of contact, right? The more the merrier sort of thing, but I think that's, 
you know, I could pick up like a, a book, right? Something that weighs, as, you know, two, I put like two, three pounds in there. I could pick it up. The thing didn't dismantle. It stayed together, right? Uh, it's good to have this little bit of a lip here. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to bring this up to the edge here. I, I would keep the lip. It's handy. It's advantageous. You get a fish in there, it slides down in the bottom. It'll sort of stay in there. So it's, it's worth having. But uh, yeah, easy net to rig up just using some old construction materials or a stick that'll take a bend like that and a dollar store head net. You can get these for a buck or two, right? Uh, pretty cheap solution. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Um, and until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.